As I stated in my recent video on Social Security, I mentioned that railroad employees have their own separate system for receiving retirement benefits. This system appears to be an amalgamation of Social Security style benefits and a traditional contributory pension plan. But there's a bit more to it than that. I'm the Tax Geek, and here is Railroad Retirement Oversimplified. The first question you might ask is, why do the railroads have their own government-sponsored retirement system? There was a time in the early 20th century when the railroads were one of the largest private non-agricultural employers in the United States. Most of the railroads recognized the necessity of encouraging older workers to retire by providing some sort of retirement benefit. These early retirement plans were often poorly funded and subject to abrupt termination if one railroad merged with another or the railroad faced financial difficulties. The plans provided no vesting. In other words, you wouldn't qualify for any benefit unless you stayed with the railroad all the way to retirement. And the plans weren't portable, which meant that if you left one railroad to work for another, you would lose any rights to a pension with the previous railroad and need to start all over accumulating service to qualify for a pension with the new railroad. To combat these issues, Congress passed the Railroad Retirement Act in 1935, just slightly before they would enact the Social Security system. Upon enactment, the railroads transferred their pension funds to a new Railroad Retirement Board, which immediately started paying benefits to eligible retirees. Going forward, railroad employees and the railroads would contribute to a central fund to provide benefits to retirees. Starting in 1965, the Railroad Retirement Board started collecting Medicare taxes as well. By the 1970s, benefits under railroad retirement were split, with the RRB collecting contributions for a benefit equivalent to Social Security benefits, plus additional contributions for a supplemental traditional pension benefit. Thus, railroad retirement benefits are split into two tiers, with the Social Security equivalent benefit being Tier 1 and the supplemental pension being Tier 2. Although Tier 1 benefits are mostly equivalent to Social Security, more benefits are provided, including unemployment, occupational injury or workers' compensation, and short-term disability benefits. The current combined Tier 1 and 2 contribution rate is 12.55%, 7.65% of the first $168,800 of earnings, and 1.45% of earnings above that amount going to fund Tier 1 benefits, the same rate as Social Security and Medicare, plus an additional 4.9% of the first $125,100 going toward Tier 2 benefits. Just as with Social Security, employers match the contributions at a rate of 7.65% for Tier 1 and 13.1% for Tier 2. A W-2 for a railroad employee looks like this. The boxes for Social Security and Medicare wages and withholding will be blank, and the employee's contribution to the railroad retirement system is usually shown in Box 14. All railroad retirement contributions are after-tax contributions, so there is no immediate effect on taxable income while working. Only upon retirement do some of the benefits become taxable. Instead of the familiar SSA 1099 and 1099-R forms, beneficiaries of railroad retirement benefits receive a combined form showing the Tier 1 benefits in the top or blue portion of the form and the Tier 2 benefits in the lower or green portion of the form. So how is the taxable portion of the benefits determined? We need to start by determining the taxable portion of the Tier 2 benefits. In this example, we look at Terence Driver. He is single and 73 years of age. He started collecting his railroad retirement benefits when he retired at age 67. For oversimplification's sake, his income consists entirely of his railroad retirement benefits. Part, but not all, Tier 2 benefits are taxable. Since Tier 2 is partially paid for with after-tax dollars, the portion of Tier 2 benefits attributable to those contributions is not taxed. To determine the taxable amount, the total contribution shown on the RRB 10999R is multiplied by a factor that is dependent on the age of the recipient of retirement, or the combined ages of the retiree and spouse upon retirement. The result is the amount of Tier 2 benefits that are not taxable. This is subtracted from the total Tier 2 benefits paid to arrive at the taxable amount. In this case, $38,477. I go into much more detail on this calculation in the video Is My Pension Taxable, which is in the card above and also linked in the description. To determine the taxable amount of Tier 1 benefits, we use a Social Security worksheet because the Tier 1 benefits are taxed exactly like Social Security benefits. We need both the total Tier 1 benefits paid plus the result from the Tier 2 worksheet to figure out the answer. 
If you'd like to see that particular type of sausage being made, I go into this in detail in my video, Why Are Social Security Benefits Taxable?, which is also linked in the description. But the short version is that once one half of Tier 1 benefits, plus all other income exceeds certain thresholds, part of the benefits can be taxable. Up to 85% of Tier 1 benefits may be taxable depending on other income. In the case of Mr. Driver, the taxable portion of his Tier 1 benefits is $6,909. Tier 1 benefits are entered on line 6 of Form 1040, with the total amount of benefits in Box 6A and the taxable portion in Box 6B. Tier 2 benefits go on line 5 of Form 1040, with the total amount of benefits in Box 5A and the taxable portion in Box 5B. Since railroad retirement benefits can be taxable, can taxes be withheld on these benefits? Absolutely, but it takes some doing to get it right. If you'd like to have taxes withheld from both the Tier 1 and Tier 2 benefits, you'll have to submit two withholding forms to the RRB. To have taxes voluntarily withheld from your Tier 1 benefits, you need to submit a Form W-4-V, or Voluntary Withholding Request, just as you would with Social Security benefits. On this form, you indicate what percentage of your Tier 1 benefits to be withheld for federal tax. To have taxes withheld from your Tier 2 benefits, you submit Form W-4P, or Withholding Certificate for Periodic Pension or Annuity Payments. Filling out this form is very similar to, but not identical, to filling out an ordinary W-4. You indicate your anticipated filing status, answer a few voluntary questions about additional income and potential deductions or credits, and, if you wish, request an additional flat amount to be withheld from each monthly payment. Rather than submit two forms, most beneficiaries submit just the W-4P and write in a sufficient amount of additional withholding to cover any taxes on Tier 1 benefits. The Railroad Retirement Board will not withhold state tax from either Tier 1 or Tier 2 benefits. If this results in state balances due, you can either make state estimated payments or have additional state withholding from other sources of income that are subject to withholding. And that's the basic info behind the Railroad Retirement System. If you'd like more detailed information, it and additional resources are linked in the video description. Please like the video if you found it informative, and share it with anyone else who could find it useful. Subscribe to the channel for additional oversimplifications of our overcomplicated tax system. And your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome in the comment space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.